This is a Mythic Gul'dan kill. Uh, this is for one of our uh, mount farming runs. This is one of uh, our kills from a crocodile perspective. You notice we all start stacked together whenever we the bonds of fell come out. Um, these are not the empowered bonds. They just uh, they don't knock you back here. So we all move all to one side together as a group. If you want, you can pop a healer orb. Um, the healers stay stacked in melee because the hand of Gul'dan that spawns right there, which controls uh, the ad spawn targets a healer. So healers want to stay in melee range this entire fight. All the DPS use their extra action button to burn this ad down and then immediately uh, while we're killing this ad, we're killing the Eye of Gul'dan. Then there's going to be empowered fail bonds right here. If you're the off tank, you want to run over the main tank at this point to clear the boss's energy. If you don't clear the boss's energy, he's going to use a big swipe when it gets to 100. But everyone at this point uh, except for the person who's going to be tanking him, should stand behind, get knocked back. I take a full energy fury of the fell there. It one shots me. I didn't have shield block or anything up. Um, so you want to make sure to clear the boss's energy. Uh, healers, again, stay in melee. If you're ranged, you see this liquid hellfire timer. You want to be as far to the left of the boss um, at max range for these liquid hellfires because they do a big, uh, pretty heavy AoE splash, and then the empowered ones leave pools. There's another Eye of Gul'dan. You want to get those down as quickly as possible before the next Fell Bonds comes. Since the Liquid Hellfire is over, you'll notice everyone creeping back into melee. You don't want to hang back. Uh, you want to stay as close as possible. The other tank gets knocked back. I taunt. And we are going to all stop DPS and break the bonds. No one should be taunting the boss. Everyone should help. Break. If, if you'll notice this phase will end when the boss hits uh, around really 51%, but uh, around 50% health. And you want to make sure that you time it so that he doesn't uh, get a really bad, um, he doesn't get a, a bad transition. You don't want an Eye of Gul'dan or a Fel Bond or a Hellfire happening then. So we make sure that uh, we phase them at the right time so that we don't have to deal with any of those mechanics. During this phase, you notice everyone running to the north. After every storm and at the beginning of this phase, you always want to run north because you're going to notice this knockback. If you are standing on the south or even uh, on the west or east and you don't have a movement speed increase, you would get knocked off the edge, die, and you wouldn't be able to be bound uh, As the off tank, I'm going to be soaking souls in the well. The main tank cannot soak the souls. If you are tanking and you're standing in that soul well, you will drop aggro on the boss and he will randomly start one-shotting. So we just have all our Warlocks soak this before the Black Harvest comes. This is the same as Heroic. There's really nothing different about this phase. It's it's a carbon copy of the last phase in Heroic, really. Uh, we are going to soak all those uh, so wells. It's best to have just a few people soak all of them ex instead of having people split them because it caps at nine stacks. So we have our Warlocks and our off tank soak it, and maybe a couple melee, just because the Warlocks have leached through Drain Soul and Drain Life, and uh, tank is obviously not be bothered with uh, taking much damage. Uh, notice right after that Black Harvest, there's going to be a Storm of Destroyer. If you stand in this, it will one-shot you, so you want to use a movement speed to get back. Always go north. Notice how we were sinking Gul'dan in the south, and then when the storm comes, we run north. The reason being because after he does a storm, he'll eventually do that blowback that blows you south again, and if you get blown off the edge, you can't be res. Use your cooldowns on these Eyes of Gul'dan. That's when the biggest damage uh, comes out. It's even more damage than the Black Harvest, in my opinion. Um, and then if you're at the Soul Wells, you want to soak those. You'll notice I'm not even bothering hitting the boss. I'm just trying to... You know, I'm using my Heroic Leaps to get back into the Soul Well as quickly as possible while I'm getting blown back. There's going to be a Black Harvest here, and right before the Black Harvest goes through, we're soaking the last of those souls. You stack up for the Black Harvest. And then after this Black Harvest, we have Gul'dan already in the south. He's going to do a Storm of Destroyer. If your DPS is really low, you might actually have to worry about this storm. Uh, this is actually um, one of our lower DPS kills just because we're doing this on alts, just to farm more mounts. But um, if you get this storm, uh, you just have to make sure that you run away just like you did before. If you get a third storm, uh, it can be really bad because a Black Harvest sinks right after it. So you have to be very mindful of how much damage you do. In phase three, there's gonna be a mage or warlock, but preferably a mage assigned to spell still the ads that spawn. And you wanna have two ideally melee DPS soaking the soul savers. The first time that uh, Illidan here, or that, you know, the 
this kind of spirit of Illidan. First time that he gets uh, 100 energy, he's going to do Soul Sever to the tank. Only the tank should get hit by this. I'm going to actually soak the first one just so the melee DPS don't have to. And then as the off tank, I'm going to go and handle the adds. You'll notice I'm running very far away from the raid because of that flame crash that drops. I'd, I'd rather not drop it in raid because it does more damage to the raid if I'm too close to it. I bring the add to melee. And we kind of kill it too fast. I should have started pulling it out right here. But since it's an ad that sometimes casts things, uh, it sometimes doesn't want to move. And also, for some reason, I opened up uh, my you know guild window. Uh, but you want to ideally not drop that demonic essence. I, I, would, I wanted to drop it where I'm standing right now. I didn't want to drop it in melee. But it's all right. People know what to do. They know how to charge the essence and not to overcharge it. You see the mage with that shield around him. He has three bulwarks of Asenoth around him on the top right of my screen. Uh, they are killing the Night Orb at the perfect amount of time. And we, most people use a weak aura just to make sure they have it synced right. Um, but if uh, the person who has a bulwark doesn't kill that Night Orb in time, the, the raid will wipe unless you have really high DPS and, and completely bypass that mechanic. The second ad, I'm pulling south. Uh, we're never going to use this demonic essence unless you have a very slow kill. When we were still like 915 eye level, we would use those second night orbs, but um, now that we're in, in forest gear, we skip that mechanic the second time. We decided to save Lust um, for this point. Sometimes we use it at the beginning of the phase, but you'll notice that we charge that demonic essence right before we went into that shield. If you don't charge the demonic essence, it doesn't enter. Don't get into the shield. Both the demonic essence and the visions will eventually, they'll just one shot you. So it's important that we time those. Notice the most important mechanic here is the parasites. Notice how every time there's been parasites, we've been dropping them right on top of the boss's left leg. Use either a shockwave or leg sweep or a demon hunter chaos nova to stun those. Here's what happens when you flame crash inside the raid. You notice how it, hit, it only hit everyone for about 20 to 30 percent of health. So it's negligible damage, which is why I didn't bother moving out. But if the only reason I stayed in is because uh, everyone was full health. If there was someone who was not full health, I would have moved out there. Um, we kill it before we ever have to deal with the second Night Orb. But if you want to know what it looks like to deal with those Night Orbs twice, you can watch one of our much older videos when we're in a much lower.